All right, Leviticus 27, this is the last chapter in Leviticus, and let's call it a fifth, not for any shady reasons, but because, once again, that is literally going to come out of the passage, and this is a very serious passage in a lot of ways. It's going to take a slight detour from the rest of the laws that have been talking about things like cleanliness and holiness and rest, and now he's going to talk about vows, how important it is under the law to respect your vows. It's gonna be the foundation for a couple of different stories that are gonna happen later on in the book of Judges. One, when the children of Israel are fooled into making a deal with the people of the land, the Gibeonites, a group of people who instead of fighting against Israel are gonna to try to con them into sparing them, and that's exactly what they do. And because the Israelites give their word to the Gibeonites, God's command uh, he's basically going to say, you got to honor your word, even though by the end of Judges, they're going to have huge problems coming out of the region of Gibeah. And another story that will stretch out of this particular chapter is the story of Jephthah. And if you're not familiar with his story, he makes a tragic vow in many ways, implicating the laws that we'll see here. But first of all, let's get into that portion about the fifth, because the fifth is going to be similar to what we saw in the laws of restitution, where we saw an individual who seemed to have realized their guilt in the guilt offering, if they were able to bring back or make the person whole by restoring what they took or swindled or negligently handled, they were supposed to restore what they took and add a fifth to it. Well, when a person makes a vow to God under this law, if they get either uh, second thoughts or a change of heart, what they can do is in some circumstances, they can redeem the property that was vowed to God if they add a fifth to the value. And so in many ways, it's basically um, taking back a vow is like theft in terms of the penalty. But it's not always the case that they'll be able to simply redeem it with uh, the addition of a fifth. There are certain circumstances beginning in verse 28 that says a thing that you've devoted at a certain level has to be devoted and that's it verse 28 reads but no devoted thing that a man devotes to the lord of anything that he has whether man or beast or of his inherited field shall be sold or redeemed every devoted thing is most holy to the lord no one devoted who is to be devoted for destruction from mankind shall be ransomed he shall surely be put to death that's the passage that implicates jephthah's daughter See, because Jephthah was an outcast among his people, but he was a great soldier, a great fighter. And when they got in trouble, they needed Jephthah's help. And so Jephthah uh, called on God and God answered his prayer. But Jephthah called on God with a vow that the first thing to come out of his house, he would dedicate to the Lord. And the first thing to come out of his house when he came back from battle and victory in battle was his daughter. And I won't get into the uh, morality of the story because honestly, the first few times I read it, it bothered me to the point where I was like, how is this even right? But there are a couple of interesting things to note about this story. First of all, she laid down her life for her father's mistake. They let her go to mourn her virginity. She voluntarily came back to honor a commitment that he made in error. Even though she doesn't get a lot of press, it's not all that different from the way they describe Jesus' sacrifice in the Gospels when it says that he noted no one takes my life, but he laid it down for the mistakes of other people. And so she's a very subtle character in the Bible that may give us some pictures of the kind of sacrifice we'll later see in Jesus. Other thing to notice, Jephthah as an outcast wanted to succeed so badly that he spoke without really understanding the consequences of what he was saying. And so from Jephthah, understand, we can be so desperate to either overcome a difficult situation or shake off family shame that we speak in haste, not thinking about the consequences of what we might vow or promise or say we're willing to do. And so his story is giving us an indication of no matter how desperate situations get, we have to understand that our words can get us or our loved ones in difficult situations that can be hard to get out of. And so the encouragement for all of us is um, to pray to God to help give us the patience and the foresight to understand the seriousness of the things that we might want to promise when we're under pressure. His best to you as you go forward in him, though.